We're in the Palm Beaches in a place that's been called the most fun small town in the USA. I'm Frank Licari, and this is Delray Beach. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit palmbeachfl.com for more information. Hey guys, we're here in the Palm Beaches. We're here at Old School Square in Delray Beach and we're going to talk to uh, Palm Beach author and Palm Beach Post journalist Elliot Kleinberg. How are you, sir? Hello. Thanks so much for being with us today. Welcome Tell to Palm me. Beach County. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. Tell me about this place. How did we get here? It all started, of course, with Henry Flagler coming to Palm Beach, extending his railroad from North Florida, from Jacksonville all the way to Miami. And then in the late 1890s, other people started coming down, saw opportunities. Three men from Michigan, Boynton, Linton, and Swinton, and they came down to this part of the county, which of course was complete wilderness. Uh, and looked around and decided that they wanted to set up their, their neighborhoods and their communities here. Originally, the name of the town was Linton. Oh. Linton had a lot of financial failings, okay. and they decided that the name Linton might not connote progress sure. or good things. Yeah. So they changed it to Delray. Now, there's a neighborhood in Detroit called Delray, Delray of the King. Yeah, of the King. Um, and so when these settlers came down from Michigan, they we're familiar with the neighborhood in Detroit. So that's how it became Delray. Delray has a lot of roots here, and one of them is agriculture. Tell me a little bit about the history of that. All sorts of produce grew down here. West of here is now a very large growing area. If you eat a red pepper anywhere in the southeastern United States, there's a pretty good chance it was grown in west of Delray Beach. I did not know about the peppers, so this is a revelation for me. All, every time I eat a pepper now, I'm gonna think of you, Elliot. There's a lot of history here in this town. And speaking of, we're here in front of a couple buildings here. This is the Cornell Museum, and behind it is the Crest Theater. Tell me a little bit about the history of these buildings. Well, this was an old educational complex. It was a school, and as the population grew and new schools were built, this was closed, and it was empty for a long time. Then, of course, this is now a centerpiece of what's become a remarkably revitalized stretch of Palm Beach County. I've talked to my old friends from Miami who say, oh, Delray Beach, sure. You know, and they'll drive an hour up here because they've heard about the nightlife in Delray Beach. Its, it's reputation has exploded. Well, the nightlife here is incredible. I mean, you, you, you can see as you come in, there's just wonderful shops and restaurants. It's kind of a, a Mayberry by day, Manhattan by night. You can get anything you want, no matter what you want. and. We've got a very cool, authentic Main Street that intersects with a world-class and accessible public beach. This exhibit is called Lit, and the inspiration for our curator, Melanie Johansson, was that drinking? art... Drinking? A lot of drinking? No, oh. no, no. <laughs> it's that um, art typically is lit from the outside, but the art featured in this exhibit is all lit from within, or an element of light is actually used as a medium. And in this gallery, which is our Art Walk gallery we're coming into, mm -hmm. we feature local art. And this is, uh, this is amateurs as well. This so. is amateurs, this is instructors, So if I artists. wanted to try my hand out at a little bit of artwork, Absolutely. you would allow me to put my stuff Absolutely. up on this wall? Wait a second. From the heart. Yeah, this is That's some of mine. That's your stuff. Yes. Wow, so, this, so you're an artist as I'm well? I'm a glass artist. You're a glass artist? Mm -hmm. I'm from Italy, and uh, a trip to Murano really inspired. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, so this is Italian inspired. Close yes. to my heart. Close yes. to my heart. Look at this! This is <laughs> authentic Italian in Del Rey. Well, they don't call it the most fun town in the USA for nothing. Just when you thought things couldn't get any more fun, we're here at Putting Around in Delray Beach. When did this get started? Well, we started about five years ago in August, and my mother came home one night and said, I hate my job, what can I do? So she came up with a bunch of ideas, and this was, I thought, the dumbest idea she could have came up with. But three months later, we were in business, and we were you built. You had it. 
And obviously we're seeing a lot of kids around, so a lot of families make this their sort of a hot spot for entertainment. A lot of families, a lot of date night activity. Date night, so tell me about date nights. Well, we serve beer and wine on our course. Okay, well, that's gotta be unique, yeah, right? Yeah, we were the first in the U.S. to start doing that. Can we get to Absolutely. play a little bit? Absolutely, I brought you a club and all a All right, ball. all right. Is this, now, what's the skill involved in this? Because this uh, is a lot of... I learned the kids are better than the adults. Kids are better. Bounce shots. Okay, that's the key? The kids the key? just get up and they hit it, and it all goes in. It's been a while. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Bounce. Oh. In. Oh. This is the downtowner, and this is Tierney, our marketing director. How are you today? Good. Thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about what uh, service you provide here. We provide a free ride service in downtown Delray Beach, and anyone who lives in our service area or is around in our service area can request a free ride through our mobile app. Free rides? Hold on a second here. Nothing's free, so how, how, come on, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the catch? All the vehicles are wrapped with advertising, and the drivers make their money off tips. I'd like you to take me somewhere. Where yes. can we go? Can we go to the beach? This is Jeff. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff tucks you in. It's like having your mother with you. Safety first. Here we go, onward to the beach. Is there a horn or anything? The most, uh, the most picked up from area would definitely be the beach. And at nighttime, it's almost always from like a, like a house to the downtown area. Gotcha. Are we gonna take an Instagram picture together before yeah, we get of off course. this? All right. Thank you so much. And I'm, if I was dressed, I would go jump right in the water right now. We finally made it to the actual beach that is Delray Beach, and you'll see behind me, uh, I know you're probably thinking, what's that thing doing out of the water? Well, that is a kite, and this is Randy the Kite Man. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. I flew kites as a kid, but I've never seen a kite that looks like a Macy's Day float. Where do you get these? Do you make them? What, where, where do we get these things? These kites are special made. This one's made in New Zealand by a guy by the name of Peter Lynn, and it cost about 5000 be made. So you, you got an investment into this. Yeah, I have about 60 of them. This kite is one of the largest kites in the world. It's 100 feet long. It's actually the size of a real whale. Of a real whale, yeah. It's 30 feet wide and it's all air filled. But you travel all around uh, the all country around. with this, right? All Making around. kids happy. Kids gave me that name. They call me Randy the Kite Man because I had so many kites. I'm sure. I taught school in Boston for 30 years and and we started using these kites to learn math. To learn math? How do you how, how do you do that? Well, you... we had a kite up in the air like that one. Uh-huh. And one of my students came up to me and said, you know, Mr. Lowe, if we dropped another line down from the back of that kite, we could do the Pythagorean theorem. Usually I'm right down here at Delray Beach. This is where I want to be. I love this community and I love Delray and it's nice to see the people smile when they see my kites on. Oh, this is just as amazing. I am here with the key holders of history here for the entire town. This is Winnie, the executive director, Howard, the president, and Lewis, the board member, right? <laughs> well, this is actually just one exhibit that we happen to have right now. It's called Fishtails. Um, in this particular instance, we actually worked with the community for the last six months and have received over a thousand items. And it is literally the fishing history of our area. This involves Ernest Hemingway, so I'm fascinated with Hemingway, so tell me a little bit about this. It's handmade, and included in it is a sterling silver hand-signed copy of Old Man in the Sea, wow. um, written over uh, to Mr. Rybovich from Ernest. From Ernest Hemingway. Yeah. These two photos up here are of the Zill family, and they've always been associated with the Zill mango. And this is so classic Delray in front of the old South Florida-style home on Federal Highway with the old car, and of course they had just caught bluefish. And everybody fished with their families. And there were fish and mangoes, it was a pleasant time. It was a pleasant time. That's what you're telling me. We're here at the Delray Beach Historical Society. This is the front porch of the Quezon Cottage. Reverend Quezon was retired at the time, moved down here. His son was the first doctor in Delray. 
Okay. I think some other fun facts, his son was the first one to have a pool in Delray. Well, because that, that's because he was the first doctor. <laughs> right, right. right. First pool. Probably. He also was instrumental in bringing electricity and plumbing to Delray Beach, too. In 1915 to 1935, it's very typical of a Florida farmhouse. The furniture style and the original floors um, and some of the architectural details are common for the time. Getting close to the center of town brings us to the Spady Cultural Heritage Museum. The Spady Museum was built in 1926 by Solomon David Spady. He came to the area to be the teacher for what was then called the Colored Children. He was a member of a national organization called New Farmers of America, and that's where he met his mentor, George Washington Carver. And it was Carver who recommended that he come down here because Carver had received a letter from a local saying we need a teacher for our children. William Robinson got here in 1900, built his family home in 1901. He was a farmer. He right. would write letters to the newly opening historically black colleges and universities requesting a teacher. And that's the letter that brought Mr. Spady to the area. Good. The rest of the exhibit is the history of black pioneers in Delray Beach. In Delray Beach. Yes. Anyone who is of a pioneering family can come in well, and see, actually that's be, be fascinating. in the museum. I yeah. want that. I want yeah, my that's own. Very interesting. Right? Yeah. You want your own, walk into a museum and see your family <laughs> history. Absolutely. That's, that's what a museum is for. Right. It's right. fantastic. This is uh, Reverend Keyes, who was pastor of the oldest church in Delray Beach, the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. It was established in 1896. Is that still in existence? It's still in existence. Okay. Citizens named their neighborhoods based on their physical characteristics. So the people who lived in the sands, and this is a perfect uh, picture of the sands, named because of the white sugar sand that covered the ground. Oh, that we know we the white okay. sugar sand covered almost all of the coast. Now, do you have an archive of that? Did everyone donate these? Yes. To, yes, you have an archive. They donated, mm -hmm. and people are still donating. We have collections of African American memorabilia. We have documents. We have deeds. We have marriage licenses. We have all those kinds of um, items in our permanent collection. So in between museum hopping, visiting the cute shops, and going to the beach, it's always time to eat. We're going to visit Max's Harvest. Our concept is farm to fork, so we do our best to source local sustainable ingredients. So tell me about this dish here. What are we, uh, what are we looking at? So this is a great dish. It's a great Florida summer dish, in my opinion. So we have our, our half chicken, and it has a pineapple daddle pepper glaze. So we have local pineapples, sure. and we have daddle peppers, which are a native Florida pepper. The cuisine is New American, and New American to us... Because we didn't like the old Americans. <laughs> we really want to replace them with the new ones. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So New American to us is America is a mixed melting pot of all different cultures. So we are able to have some Italian influence, we're able to have some French influence, we're able to have some Asian influence. Sure and all just be new American cuisine with a lot of American ingredients. People are very concerned about their health and they're concerned about what they put in their bodies. And, you know, we were kind of on the forefront of that in South Florida. Tell me a little bit about the history of this place. It was built in 1926 during Prohibition, so we added our bar later. And my family bought it in 1935. I grew up in a little house that was in the parking lot, but everybody got addicted to their car. You were raised in the parking lot? I was, there, yes. <laughs> with no alcohol? No alcohol. Right. No wow. alcohol So it was on purpose? Lot. Yes. Okay. And I'm thrilled to be back in Delray in 1994. Delray was struggling to get better, and everybody was working together, and sure. they managed to achieve getting twice being the all-American city, which was really quite an accomplishment. Sure. A lot of lot of people really worked on that. We're as close to the beach as you can get without actually sleeping in the sand, right? I mean, and, we're really close. And we have our own beach club. Is that right? The wow. Colony Cabana Club. Private. We have the most spectacular pool in Delray. Now she's bragging. Maybe okay. in Palm Beach County. Wow. work with my cousin Hillary. Oh, well, where's cousin Hillary? Cousin we... Hillary's over here. Come here, her, cousin her Hillary. My father was the manager for 
over 35 years. This is right? Hillary, everyone. Hi. Pleasure. So your grandfather managed to this place? Yes. yes. For uh, how long? How long ago and for how long? How long? Uh, in the 40s okay. until the 80s. Wow. So 40 plus years. It's beautiful. Well, you should know that all this furniture is from 1926. Okay, the I wicker, should know that. The table. And it's all you know. still workable. Thank you guys so much. We'll Thank see you, you soon. This is an actual size replica of a real mouth of a shark, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. A megalodon. A, me a megalodon. Explain to me what all this is. Well, right now in this room, we have a shark jaw exhibit. We have over 100 um, shark and ray jaws, and it really gives people a good idea about the differences in teeth structure and mouth structure of our um, greatest predators in the ocean. And that's a megalodon. That's a megalodon. And that actually exists? It does not. OK, good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you won't see that in the ocean. Okay. It won't be chasing you. No, it would never. It would, I would never see it because I'd pass out before it would ever get close to me. <laughs> I would, too. So Mr. Frank is going to take a piece of food. He is going to try to drop it what? right in front of the nose of that one. Wow. Perfect. Wow. Oh, uh, I was not expecting it. that. No, right? Look at it. It's like tough Let's see if I can get in the catch. Whoa. Ooh. Yeah. Loose box. Now, guys, nurse sharks are considered non-aggressive. They do not bite people. They do not want to bite. But you should never bother a shark. Nurse sharks, like I was saying, are a non-aggressive species. Okay. Since they do not feed on large animals, they would never look at me and think, maybe that's food. Right. Now, I wouldn't touch them. I wouldn't harass them anyway sure. because they have a mouth. But they will never be aggressive to a person off the bat. There so has to they be they avoid you, or do they come around and They you're... avoid me. They check okay. me out every now and sure. then. But usually, they're at the other end of the tank, just like. So it's like me going into a bar. Yeah, yeah. Like, Everyone else how is the girls, the Yeah, how the girls react to me is how the sharks react to him. Tell me a little bit about bosses. Give me the history here. Well, you have to go back 38 years. Started out as a small little uh, seaside bar. Seaside bar. And is, has now developed into uh, a, a great. A juggernaut. Uh, yeah, really, literally a it's juggernaut in Delray Beach on the beach. Yeah. No doubt. Everywhere you go, you hear about this place. Well, Everywhere you go. The you restaurant know? was founded by some guys outside of Boston from Worcester, Mass. And all the New Englanders came down, you know, during the season and off season. And now they've all, a lot of them have retired down here right. and, and have contributed to the growth of Delray Beach. Really they wanted in reality. to bring a little slice of North slice of New England, here. absolutely. So you must meet sure. some amazing people. Yes. You get a lot sure. of tourists in here? Get a lot of tourists, get a lot of people coming back through the years, sure. year after year. A lot of people who lived here, moved away, now their kids are back, their grandkids, all that stuff. So it's a generational so generation. Just in the last 10, 15 years, the, the, the growth of, of great restaurants and, and options in Delray Beach has just, just grown exponentially over the years. And that it's, was it's a, just that was a great, a, lively town to be in. A nice way to say he's got competition. Yeah, now. no, That's no. What it was, We do right? what we do. We <laughs> do what great. we do. A little Bloody Mary and sure. some you know, lobster Benedict or something like yeah. that for breakfast. Yeah. And then uh, lunch off the beach, casual, come as you are, great lobster rolls, fried up switch clams, the New England stuff, you know. Yeah, you're uh, talking my language. That kind of good stuff. And then at night, uh, we have uh, live entertainment. I encourage you to discover more of this exciting village by the sea. And down the street, just south of Delray Beach, you can visit another energizing community, Boca Raton, the home of Florida Atlantic University and the Boca Bowl. Make a trip to Meisner Park, the Boca Raton Museum of Art, and the Town Center Mall. Then take the family to the Gumbo Limbo Nature Center and the Children's Science Explorium. Experience the Boca Raton Resort and Club and more. And now we head back to Delray Beach. Delray Beach is a hotbed of artistic expression. There's public art everywhere. And the best part is it's free. Refreshing. Where are we exactly? Well, we're pretty far west in Delray. You can just come out here and be amongst nature. 
you'd been here about two weeks ago, you would have seen a lively rookery. A lot of um, adult wood storks. A, a rookery? Yes. Now, just explain to me what, uh, what a rookery is. That's where the birds converge into one area. In this case, in Florida, you'll find them all in these uh, bushes okay. to raise their young. It's sort of my Eden. It's where I come to relax after a hard day at work. R relaxing to you is hearing 40 or 50 birds squawking <laughs> constantly. That's and also, well, it's also framing photos so that, oh, you know, sure. they come out with a, an artistic touch. But, you know, what's really neat about it is that these birds have been doing this for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And if you give them the opportunity to reproduce in an area like this, as the water department did, they will. And it would be really cool if we had more of these types of areas uh, throughout South Florida. This is your home now. This is my home. Do they make you pay? Just, no. No, you don't pay any no, rent or anything. You just show up another, anytime you want. I'll go anywhere that's free. Now, if you were to build <laughs> walls around that little gazebo there and right. just call that your little apartment, would they let you do that? If you can arrange that, I'm, I will pay you. You know what? I do have more power than I look than I, I think look you like do. Think well, maybe we can make that happen for you. I'm there. In 1904, George Morikami, along with some other Japanese settlers, established a colony here called the Yamato Colony. When he was getting older, he wanted to give this land to the people of Palm Beach County to enjoy. So we have 17 acres of Japanese-style gardens that spans about a thousand years of interpretation. The garden is called Rojien in Japanese, which means Gardens of the Drops of Dew and it was designed and built by Hoichi Kurisu, who is a, a very well-known Japanese garden designer. If we could find a dragon, I think that the audience would really appreciate I, that. I think you need to uh, spend the night. Okay. You pitch a tent, it only comes the out at night, it comes smart, out at night. smart. That's why most of our visitors don't see them. Okay, okay. Very so elusive. This institution is unique in the country because we're the only collecting institution that focuses on Japanese art and culture. This is a wonderful exhibit that showcases early traditional Japanese art and craft, Japanese baskets, a quintessential aspect of everyday life. This size of a garden, a Japanese style garden, is unique in the world. It is understood to be kind of a jewel South Florida sure. sites and attractions. We deliver food from restaurants that don't normally deliver. They're dudes that deliver. It originally started in uh, 2009, actually, long before it was cool to own a delivery service. Okay. It was me and a couple friends, to give them credit, Chris Clovis and, and my cousin Chris, Josh. Chris, I miss you. Chris, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, <laughs> so, are you from Delray originally? No, I'm not. Okay. I moved here eight, nine years ago. Okay. So you were sitting around Delray wondering why they don't deliver. Exactly. And being, hanging out in New York where the restaurants do deliver, it was a natural kind of aha moment. Yeah. When do you become Steve Jobs? Like when, when does it just <laughs> blow up to the point where you're like, okay, this was, this is brilliant. We actually expanded nationally now, so we're in about 40 locations spread out over five or so states. You don't get on I a moped anymore. I try to. I really enjoy it, actually. I'm going to force you to get on a moped. Right, we're going right. to get on a moped together. Oh, Bam! Let's do this! <laughs> what, do I, what do I do with my feet? <laughs> I don't know what to do with my legs! <laughs> what do you do with your legs on this, sir? Yes, eh? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> I wish my cape was flowing! Yeah, you gotta make the cape flow. There we go! What brought you to the Delray Beach area? My husband worked in Delray, and I commuted to Miami, where I still have my full-time job. I'm a paralegal in the county attorney's office. You'd work drill. all day, and then you'd come here and absolutely, open up the restaurant? Absolutely, absolutely. It's a labor of love. Wow. It was just one of those things. Donald took a leave of absence from his job for three months, and we sort of did like a Caribbean, maybe Jamaican takeout. Right. I wanted to have a different concept. I wanted to have a restaurant that would be in line with the other restaurants in the area. There's only a few things that are made ahead. With the curry goat, the oxtail, mm -hmm. the jerk chicken and the jerk pork. And What'd the you pork. call me? 
Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Not you, chicken. <laughs> so what's, what have you been whipping up there? That's our very special lemonade that everyone loves. And don't ask for the recipe, because if I gave it to you, I'd have to kill well, you. Well, I was just about to. Don't ask. Oh, wow. OK. So are we going to get to eat some food? Absolutely. Everybody needs a little spice in their life. What do we got here? Oh, uh, cookies are jerk flavored meatballs. So we're veggie lo mein. Where is all this going? This feels like it's cuisine from all over the world. This is the place okay. to come. What is it's this? A world famous oxtail. Right. I need another table. Where's all this? Ha OK. Wow. I think we can feed all of Delray Beach with this, with this table. If you've ever wondered what it's like to live a true Florida lifestyle right here in Delray Beach, we've got a treat for you today. Tell us a little bit about this uh, historic place that you've got here. First, it's in the Marina Historic District. In 93, when we bought it, it was two small cottages uh, separated by about 20 feet. We added 600 feet on the top of the house. And in order to do that, we had to visually connect it with the rear cottage all the original cypress walls, ceilings, uh, the original fireplace. Which is always, <laughs> always valuable in Florida, especially it, in South Florida. Yeah. I love Delray Beach. Oh, we're such a great community mm -hmm. of people. It's a hundred year old city working to keep its cool beach town vibe. Whether you're finding your zen at the Murakami Museum in Japanese gardens or strolling along the beach and seeing a whale the size of a school bus, Delray Beach is full of adventure. It's considered a hotspot for fine dining, art galleries, upscale shops, and nightly entertainment. It's no wonder this city was named most fun small town in America. We hope you enjoyed discovering Delray Beach and that you'll join us the next time we go on the town. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit palmbeachfl.com for more information.